It's another math day with teacher Jenny and here I am with my last video for solving rational inequalities. And the pattern that we are going to talk about today is this pattern in which you've got there on the left side one term or a single algebraic, a rational algebraic expression while on the right side you've got there not a zero, not a number, but again, another rational algebraic expression. So how are we going to solve it? Now, literally speaking, everybody, uh, the concept really is the same. All you have to do is to make sure that the right side will always be set to zero and the left side will be a single term. So setting the right side as zero, we are going to transfer all the expressions found on the right side to your left side. So that means to say we are going to move x minus 2 over x minus 3 on your left side. So that means you have here x plus 3 over x plus 1 minus x minus 2 over x minus 3, which is greater than 0. So next we are going to um, Combine, make sure that the left side is a single term. So we will be combining those fractions in there. And in combining, we must make sure that we have the same denominator. So to get the same denominator is for us to get the LCD. And LCD here is x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now I will be uh, creating a video on how to find the LCM or the LCD for an algebraic expression. So kindly stay tuned on that one if you're having trouble with finding the LCD or the LCM of an algebraic expression. Anyways, we'll move on. So moving on, once we have the LCD, then we are now ready to uh, multiply that LCD in there by the entire term and then write the remaining on the numerator. So that means x plus 1 times x minus 3 is the LCD. We are multiplying that to your x plus 3 over x plus 1. So that means to say, let me just write it separately here. So x plus 1 and then x minus 3. That will be multiplied to the entire first term which is x plus 3 over x plus 1. So multiplying that one, that means to say we can cancel this, the common between the LCD and the denominator, and then we are going to multiply what is left. So we have there x minus 3, I mean, yes, x minus 3 and then x plus 3. Okay, so we are now down to the second term. For the second term in there, we are going to do the same thing. So we will have the LCD as x plus 1 and x minus 3. Multiply that to the second term, which is x minus 2 over x minus 3. So canceling what we can cancel, we have that as x plus 1. Multiply that to your x minus 2. Okay. So that is what is left in there. So copy A and this is minus. And then we have x plus 1 and x minus 2. We copy the inequality symbol and that's greater than or equal to 0. Now we are to combine them on the numerator part. Let us not combine the denominator part because later on we will be equating that one to 0. So combining at the top. We have, this is now the difference of two, I mean the sum and difference of two binomials. So we can just go right away in the shortcut in finding the product of that one by simply squaring the common first term, which is x, x squared. And then we have that one as a minus as the result. And then we square the common second term, which is 3. So that becomes 9. And then we do the foil method of this one. So we have x times x or a negative. We carry with them 
in order for you not to be confused, let's, let us try to copy the minus in there and put the result of the FOIL method in a parenthesis. So we have x times x, that will be x squared. x times negative 2, that will be negative 2x. 1 times x, that will be x. 1 times negative 2, that will be negative 2. Over your x plus 1 times x minus 3. And that will be greater than 0. So let me just erase this one. I'll be needing the space. Now moving on, we are going to simplify further the uh, one inside the parenthesis. So we have your x squared, we copy, minus 9. And then we are going to simplify what is inside. So we can just simply combine negative 2x and x. So we have x squared minus x minus 2. And then that will be over x plus 1 times x minus 3. And that will be greater than 0. Next, we need to get that negativity inside. So we have here x squared minus 9 minus x squared. And that's plus x. And then plus 2. All over x plus 1 over x minus 3. I mean times x minus 3 greater than 0. So combining, we have this one as 0. And then we have here x, negative 9 plus 2, that will be negative 7. And then that will be over x plus 1 times x minus 3, which is greater than 0. So from there, we can now equate our numerator and denominator. So this is our new inequality here. That fits our requirement that it should be a single term on the left side and a zero on the right side. So equating, we have that one as x minus 7 equal to zero. Our x is 7. That's one of the critical value in there. The other one is, notice that on the new denominator, you've got there two factors. So we can just simply have the two factors equated to zero. And then, we equate each of the factors to 0, so x plus 1 equal to 0. This will be x equal to negative 1. That's one of the critical value there. And the other factor is x minus 3 equal to 0. And that will be x equal to positive 3 in there. So those are, but again, your um, denominator, which is the x plus 1 and x minus 3, the values there must not be equal, but it should be set as the restriction, or it should not be equal to negative 1 and 3, but we are considering them as critical value. So, moving on to the next step, we are taking note on our critical values. We've got three critical values in there. So, we have one is x will be equal to 7, and the other one is x not equal to negative 1, and the other one is x not equal to positive 3. So considering those things, or those numbers, so we can plug that in here, so we can have negative 1 here, and then we can have our 3 here, and our 7 in there. And then we divide our uh, number line into different regions. So this is region 1, region 2, 3, and 4. Now considering region 1, everybody, we are going to test out here, test out the values, if whether that will be satisfying our newfound inequality in there. So let me say, if my x is equal to negative 2, going back, I will be getting the new inequality there for easy comparison. So we have x minus 7 over your x plus 1, and then x minus 3, that will be greater than 0. So plugging in the value that we've chosen, you can actually choose negative 3, negative 4, and so on. So we can have negative 2. So negative 2 minus 7 over negative 2 plus 1 times negative 2 minus 3 will not be greater than 0. So Negative 2 minus 7, that will be negative 9. 
negative 2 plus 1, it's negative 1. And then we have negative 2 times negative 3, that becomes, I mean minus 3, that becomes negative 5. Will that be greater than 0? So as you can see there, this becomes positive, and the other one is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative, so that means to say that this is false. So since that is false, our region 1 is out. So moving on to region 2. We can find here an x which is equal to 0, 1, 2, and you can choose freely. So let me just choose on x equal to 0, plugging that in here. So I have 0 minus 7 over 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 3. Will that be greater than 0? So 0 minus 7 is negative 7, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Will that be greater than 0? So the first one is negative 7, and then the denominator is negative 3. And negative divided by negative, that makes it positive. So that means this is true. Since that is true, we are saying that this will be part of our solution on your inequality. Now moving on to region 3, we can get any value in there. So let me have x equal to 5. Substituting that one to my x, we have 5 minus 7 over 5 plus 1 times 5 minus 3. Will that be greater than 0? So 5 minus 7 is negative 2. 5 plus 1 is 6. 5 minus 3 is 2. So as you can see there, we have negative and this one is positive. So that means this is false because negative divided by positive is negative. And that cannot be greater than 0. So that means this is out. So let's go for 4. So we can have here x equal to 9. And then plugging that in, we have 9 minus 7 over 9 plus 1 times 9 minus 3. Will that be greater than 0? So 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 plus 1 is 10. And then we have 9 minus 36. Is that greater than 0? The answer is yes, that is true. Because we have positive and positive, that is positive and positive are always greater than 0. So that means this is part of our solution. Now writing the solution, we know out from the test that we have regions 2 and 4. So to write each, let's start with region 2. We will be writing based on their boundary or the critical numbers. We have on region two, negative one and three, but upon seeing that one, we forgot to plot or we forgot to graph it. Now for negative one, since that belongs to the denominator, so that's a hollow, and positive three, that is also hollow because that belongs to the denominator a while ago, and your seven there is also hollow, even though that belongs to the numerator, but our symbol there is greater than without the equal to in there. So that means it's a hollow. So we are using parentheses. So we have negative one, positive three as the boundary of your region two. That will be together with your region four values, you there as a symbol of the union. So we have there, boundary of region 4 is from 7 going to positive infinity. So we'll have 7 until positive infinity. So there you go with that pattern and how you are going to solve it. I hope you were learning something from me today. And remember, everything under solving, rational inequalities are very easy. All you have to do is to Remember this, that the left side must be single and the right side must be zero. So that's it. I hope you were learning from me today. This is your teacher Jenny always saying that math really is like a problem in real life. It is um, needing an experience for you to solve it. You need to experience more difficulties in life in order for you to make your life easier or to encounter problem and you will be facing that one with ease and a lot easier. So again, 
practice more practice and practice and get used to the entire process like your life get used to your life every problem really has a solution and in math really everything is easy if you are practicing more again this is your teacher jenny saying good luck and stay safe bye